transmission is the clutch. So you're grinding in reverse before the four clutch release. Uh, I did a video on YouTube. Just go to gearboxvideo.com and check out the video. I get that same question every week. People call up, complain about grinding in reverse and hard shifting, and I have to tell them that it's actually clutch release is your problem. That you, you got a dragging disc or something else is going on. They don't want to believe me. So I decided to do this video on how, how clutches actually work. Hope you like it. These are your major components of a clutch setup. This happens to be a diaphragm clutch from Santa Force where they have these extra weights on it that when the unit is spinning centrifugally, they apply more pressure on the plate holding it in place better, supposedly. Anyway, let me take this off here for you. This is your flywheel. The ring gear of the flywheel attaches to your starter. Your starter is what spins the engine on this wheel here. This is a heavy duty billet steel flywheel that they sell, 30 pound wheel. It bolts to the crank using these bolt holes over here. Pilots on the crank with this register bore over here so it's always on center with the crankshaft. Flywheel is spinning with the engine at all times. If the engine stopped, the wheel is stopped. If it's spinning, the flywheel is spinning. Your disc hangs out in between the flywheel and this pressure plate. So the pressure plate is activated by these springs here. When you press down on these springs using a release bearing, what happens is the plate will move away from the flywheel, releasing the disc and allowing it to be free of both components. When it's bolted together like this and sandwiched and locked, if you notice this little gap over here, when you bolt this thing down and you torque it down, whatever the flywheel and, and pressure plate combination is rated at, if it's rated at 2100 pounds, that's your clamping force. So what happens is when you press down on this with the release bearing, you're going to release simply the pressure from this and allow this to freewheel in between these two components. Other than that, it's always locked 100%. Your input shaft is spline to the clutch disc of the transmission. This is a 26 spline setup. So they're kind of like that, okay? So what happens is if it's spinning independently like this, that would be maybe like neutral or something like that, or when you're in between gears in neutral position, you put your pedal down, your whole engine can spin around, and this disc can stay stationary. When you lock it together and you clamp this baby onto this, you're going to lock this to that and everything is going to spin in one shot like that, all together. A couple of things to know. A lot of problems with clutches are related to release more than slipping. Clutches do burn out and they wear and then they slip. But believe it or not, most of the issues that I have are with people not getting good enough clutch release. So why is that? How come we don't have enough release here? What happens is sometimes people have a bearing, a release bearing that's too far away. Geometrically, something has changed. So when they go through their pedal travel and the pedal moves, this thing isn't pressing this down enough to get release. A lot of people use a free play method. A free play method is simply the free play between the bearing and the fingers of the diaphragm. So what happens is maybe this is like, say, a half inch free play. So your pedal travel, okay, before it makes contact is your free play. And what happens is sometimes people have too much free play and that doesn't allow these fingers to release the disc enough and you get a dragging disc, which can cause shifting issues, grinding in reverse issues, stuff like that. So what happens is a lot of times too, is when you buy all these new components, new flywheel, new pressure plate, new clutch disc and everything, the heights may not necessarily be the same in relationship to the bell housing. Think of this bell housing is wrapped around it, okay? And what happens is you have a fork that's kind of over here holding this in place. If this thing moves, you know, closer to it or away from it because of some change maybe that the flywheel has been machined or whatever, sometimes you don't get the correct geometry and you may have to check things out first. So what I always recommend is when I put together a system like this, I'll put everything together without the transmission. I'll put maybe a dummy input shaft in like that, okay? I'll put this bearing on here like this. I'll have somebody press on the, the clutch and I'll kind of hold this in place and see if it releases, you know, by manually grabbing this and turning it. And if it doesn't, then I know I have a release issue. Don't forget that when you're spinning at very high RPMs, like 6,000 RPMs, if you don't get a clean release, you're gonna get missed shifts. So that's it, that's very simple. In other words, pressure plate sandwiches the disc to the flywheel. When you press down, using your release bearing on these fingers like this, 
they move, they move the plate away and allow this to free wheel in between the two pieces. Very simple. A few things to note. Hubs on this have offsets. You can see that this one is offset towards the engine side, okay, and not towards the clutch, the, towards the input shaft side. That's important sometimes to understand your offsets because you can have clearance issues with hubs hitting this. You can have clearance issues with flywheel bolts hitting the, the springs over here. You can have issues if it was flipped around, let's say the hub is offset this way, that it bottoms out on the spline of the input. This input shaft has basically a spline that you can't bottom out on. It can actually slide right through it. But some input shafts where they have kind of like a, a spline that ends here like that, literally you can have a poor release issue because the input can actually push the whole disc up against the flywheel because there's not enough movement here. So you need to check all this stuff out. You know, sometimes I forget that a lot of people actually don't see what goes on inside a transmission. So let me explain something. This is a reverse gear. This is how it works. It's a simple gear that slides like this into another gear. It's called a non-synchronized gear. So what happens is, even with the slightest movement of the transmission turning, you'll get this little grinding noise going on. So when people hear that reverse is grinding, it's because these two gears need to be completely stopped in order for the gear to actually slide into one another. So any slight turn, as you can hear, will cause reverse to grind. So here I am just turning this ever so slightly, okay, and we get a little bit of a rip, a little bit of a, a grind, so to speak. So when you hear people crunch reverse, it's because the transmission has not slowed down, and or it's may, maybe it's not disconnected completely from the engine. The gears internally in the transmission have synchronizers. There's a synchronized gear for one and two and three and four. So these can somehow sometimes be spinning a little bit and will break a drag and clutch this loose because the synchronizer ring acts like a clutch in itself. So these will not grind uh, as if you have a little bit of a dragging clutch. So reverse over here is always the reason you can check to see if you got a, a disc that's grinding or sometimes up front the pilot pushing inside the crankshaft if that is binding on it or sometimes when you'll see engines heat up and then all of a sudden you get hard shifting it's because the bushing expands and, 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 and holds this input shaft and it attaches it to the crank as well. So in order for us to have good shifting ability and not grind them to reverse we have to have a, a super clean clutch release and a bushing on the input shaft that is always free and spinning clean. Here's my input shaft for the transmission. It's an inch and an eighth diameter by 26 spline. It's a very common size used in a lot of new transmissions. This is my clutch disc. It's got a matching hub with the same spline. What I want to show you first of all is whenever you put a disc on a transmission, you know, and you're doing assembly, you want to make sure that they slide in and out nice and easy like this. But importantly, what I want to show you is its function. A lot of people don't understand how this thing works. And I've kind of got this camera zoomed in over here so you can see a little bit better. So what you think that everything I'm, I'm doing right over here, I'm just kind of spinning this thing and everything is going along all together. But what you don't realize is that this disc, when I spin this disc like this, is actually riveted here to this plate, to these springs, which drive the hub below it. So the disc is joined to the spring plate here, okay, through the springs to the hub below. And if you look, you see this big gap over here. That's to allow the springs to move. So your transmission is actually driven through these springs, not the hub and the clutch by itself. The springs do the driving, and that's what gives you your dampening effect. So on the front side of the disc, or the flywheel side, you can see your springs, your, your dampening springs, and you can see the hub over here. But this hub is actually floating in this area over here. It's not actually directly attached to it. It's actually can revolve inside of this. So what happens is, if you look at these rivets again, you've got this side riveted directly to this front side, holding the springs, and this hub is floating in the center. And, and you can see the hub here. It's got this little room over here so the springs can move when you get some sort of vibration or harmonics, but is actually just driven by the springs. So this goes back on the transmission like this. So here we have this clutch disc attached to the transmission, and you can see basically that the transmission is spinning with the disc. But keep in mind, power is going from this 
disc here, which would be squashed between the flywheel and the, and the pressure plate, and through the springs, into the hub, and to the transmission. If you notice on this section over here, you can see this little wavy piece of metal here. This is, uh, <clears throat> both sides of the lining are riveted to it, and it's called a Marcel. And what happens with the Marcel is it acts as a little cushion. Anytime the, the clutch is compressed, you can see this action over here. It actually absorbs some of the shock and gives a little bit more clean apply so it doesn't give you a little bit chattering. Uh, there's many different designs like this and many different concepts the way these things work, but basically it's the same, the same thing. It's the uh, object of it is to absorb some of the shock load and give a smoother apply. Some of the racing discs don't even have this and they don't even have springs in here. Everything is solid and locked direct. And that's great for racing, but it gives you a very harsh apply on the street and will also give you a very chattering effect sometimes if anything is not exactly dialed in. Okay, here's a clutch disc that I ground all the rivets off that hold the, the uh, retaining plate in place. So you could see how the hub actually is, uh, you know, set up. So this is the spring plate. This plate is riveted with these rivets down to the main drive plate here. And you can see the hub simply comes off like this. And has these springs in it. So the springs actually on the edges, these little edges on each side of the spring like this, these edges here, are driven by these little sections over here. So the disc is actually driving the hub by the springs. So if I pop these springs out, okay, and I put this hub back in here, put it back like this. You can see the action, how it works without the springs. So what happens is this thing is driving it like this. Now, when the springs bottom out, you have these rivets that it goes against. But ideally, if the spring should never allow it to smack against the rivets. So you can see the action, how it works. When you use lightweight flywheels, a lot of times the inertia of a heavy wheel keeps the springs loaded. And what happens is, by the next time the metal cylinder fires, if there's not enough inertia, this thing goes back like this. So you can get rattles in the gearbox because the lightweight flywheel doesn't allow these springs to keep tension all the time through the next firing cycle. The more cylinders you have, the less the harmonics will be. But for example, a four-cylinder engine means that it fires basically twice every revolution. And that may not be enough inertia with a lightweight wheel to keep these springs loaded. So that's why a lot of times when you have a lightweight flywheel, you'll get rattles in the gearbox. It's because these springs are making this hub actually rattle back and forth. It's like somebody taking the input shaft and jiggling it as it's being turned. So that's how the inside works on the disc. Easiest way to measure for proper clutch release is the air gap. And people ask me, what is air gap? Air gap is basically a measurement in between the disc and the flywheel or the disc and the pressure plate. Sometimes if you can, you know, they have things like feeler gauges that you can fit underneath here and check your gap. So what happens is a lot of people shoot for 40, 45 thousandths of an inch gap. 45 thousandths of an inch, you divide it by two, roughly 20 thousandths per side to allow for air in between these two pieces. So a lot of bell housings, people used to cut holes in the bell housings to allow air gap measurement using a, a flat feeler gauge. And you can put the gauge through the hole and measure your clearance between the disc and the flywheel or the disc and the pressure plate. It doesn't matter which side you can grab it from. You just want to shoot for around 40 thousandths. This is a perfect example of what I was talking about if you want to set up, have a clutch without any springs. This is a bare bones clutch disc. This is actually out of a 1958 Ferrari Berlinetta. You can see the hub is completely riveted to the drive plate and the lining is riveted to the drive plate on both sides. But the drive plate still has that little spring cushion action going on to at least dampen some of the apply. But again, this baby is locked solid, so you get a very harsh engagement with the clutch because there's no springs driving it. So again, 1958 technology, this is how it was on the old Ferraris. And you can see the way they lighten this too because they were concerned about rotating mass. Very light piece, but never let go. All right, on another, another note, this is a, another Ferrari clutch that I've worked on. Uh, same concept that I told you about. All these drive springs, floating hub in the middle, okay? And you can see here that it's worn. You can see the way 
the lining has worn down and it's actually cut into the rivets and actually this is typical of what happens when a clutch actually slips. You can see where the light is moving, you can see the lining worn and it's all worn out and stuff like that. But this here is an, a really old lever clutch, three finger clutch, some people call it. You see you got the springs inside. You can see these levers pull the pressure plate away from the engine and the springs keep the plate, the plate loaded against the engine. Very simple operation. And these levers are a little bit adjustable. They have a little bolts in here that you can move and adjust things or whatever, but it's pretty old technology. This is what was used in, again, 1958 Ferraris. Um, but tried and true method worked, worked flawlessly and they never broke. Yeah, this disc is pretty messed up. Anyway, I hope you really enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you some insight into how clutches work. Please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. Don't go fast.